hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to world geography class at waldo middle school my name is mr blumendahl and i will be your teacher for this online series of lessons on the nature of geography our first lesson is quite simple it is what is geography we refer to that as an essential question and if we are taking cornell style focus notes that is a question we will write across the top of our notes so that everything in our notes will help to answer that question. I will now give you a moment to accomplish that. So obviously the first thing we need to do is actually define the term geography itself. So our first, what I will call left side question, if we're using Cornell style focus notes, is how do we define geography? What does it mean? Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is take a moment in your table groups to intentionally have a conversation about that and answer the question of what you think geography is and then I will go about answering it here. Geography, quite simply, is the study of places and the relationships between people and their environment. So you'll notice there's two aspects to it there. First is places themselves, and second is people and how they relate to those places. And we're gonna get more specific about that as we continue. Geographers, quite simply, are people who study geography. That's the simple definition. The more complex definition is to say that geographers are people who explore both the physical properties of the Earth's surface and the human society spread across it. Again, please notice, it's the study of places and people quite simply. That's a big, long definition, but really what it says is geographers study places and people and how places and people affect each other. Physical geography is the study of the earth and its features. So when we're talking about physical geography, we're actually talking about the land itself although we can also be studying oceans and bodies of water. But when we're talking physical geography, we're not talking about people. We're simply talking about the land, the water, the nature of the Earth's surface. Whereas when we talk about cultural geography, we're really talking about people. The big, long, wordy definition for cultural geography is the study of the human population of the Earth and how human culture interacts with the natural environment. It studies the way that locations and places can have an impact on people. So cultural geography is really about us and how we relate to the land and the physical geography around us, how it affects us, and how we affect it. That's what we call a two-way relationship. Uh, another fancy word for it is it is a symbiotic relationship. So when we study geography, what we are really doing is seeking to understand where things are found, why they are there, and how they develop and change over time, uh, up to and including the way humans affect the geography, the physical geography. And with that, I'm going to pause for a moment, allow you to finish these notes, possibly write a brief summary, and then move on to the next slide. So let's focus on physical geography first. What does the study of physical geography consist of? That would become another question on the left side of your paper. And we will uh, go ahead and get into the details of that right now. First thing you need to know is what physical geographers do. Physical geographers are people who study specifically physical geography. First thing physical geographers do is they study landforms. What is the land like? What is the shape and contour of the land? Uh, again, fancy words there, but really it just comes down to what is the land like? Landforms are any form that the actual land can take. 
and anything that's underlined is a vocabulary word that you should definitely make yourself familiar with. Physical features is different than landforms because it can include any feature, including land and water, of the Earth's surface. So if you wanted to differentiate or know the difference between landforms and physical features, landforms only have to do with the land. Physical features can include land and water. Climate. Climate is a major topic in the news, in science, and in our world today. Climate is what the weather is like over a long period of time. So you'll often hear the words weather and climate. Some people think they are the same thing. They are not. Weather is what it's like right here and right now today. Climate is what the weather is like over a long period of time in a specific location. The oceans and bodies of water and how they affect the land and climate. Um, that's another thing that physical geographers study. Um, Oceans have a lot to do with our weather. If the oceans are warm, um, there's a lot of evaporation that can occur and storms become stronger and more intense. With the oceans warming, that is very consequential to the overall climate of our planet. And finally, vegetation, plant life. How does the climate affect vegetation? Um, all of these things are interrelated. And there's plant life not just on land, but also in the ocean. So that is something to consider as well. And once again, since I've gotten to the end of a slide, I'm going to give you some time to finish off your notes and do some quick review. So this right here is simply a slide which shows all kinds of physical features. Um, features seems to have gotten outside of the black box there, but hey, there's the word. You can see it. We're not going to redo this slide. So just take a look at this for a moment. This is one of those things where I will just probably click pause in class and invite you to take a gander. Um, you are going to be taking a quiz on a lot of these terms fairly soon in class because it's something we do towards the beginning of the semester. But right now, go ahead and click pause, take a gander, and look at some of the words we use to describe physical features. Okay, our final slide for today is a little bit simpler. It's another left side question, and it is simply going to answer the question, how do we define cultural geography. Cultural geography, we've talked about physical geography. The other aspect of geography we want to discuss is cultural geography. Cultural geography, quite simply, is the study of the human population of the earth and how human culture interacts with the natural environment. So how do we affect the earth? How does the earth affect us? That is a very highly consequential and important thing. It's one of the things we will be examining this semester. Culture. Culture is a word that gets bandied about quite a bit. Culture simply means the shared attitudes, values, goals, and practices of a particular group of people. So culture can include things like food, music, religion, um, the role of men and women in society, um, whether that society is based on a capitalist economic system or a socialist economic system or something in between. Um, it can include a lot more than that, but that's what comes to mind right off the top of my head. Culture is how do the people live in a specific area. And of course, culture is different in different countries and in different regions of the world. Hey, hey look, I just said that. Examples of culture are food, music, religion, beliefs, and education. So, I repeated myself a tad there, but that's okay. Cultural geography explores how the people are affected by the land and climate, as well as how people affect the land and climate. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this takes us to the end of lesson one 
of what is geography. Uh, in the next lesson, we will discuss the five themes of geography and what it is that geographers can do if you happen to want to pursue geography as a career. But for the time being, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off for the first time and inviting you to write a summary of today's notes at the bottom of your Cornell Focus Notes. Or if I have different ideas for what I want you to do, I will probably let you know in real time in class as soon as this is done. But until then, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.